Welcome to Ham Radio Q&A. In this episode, I get all choked up. Hi, this is Michael, kb 9 dvr host for Ham Radio Q&A. This is where I take your questions and answer them in the, in the video that follows. So do you have any questions you want answered about amateur radio? Uh, one of those how do I or why is it kind of questions or questions about antennas, equipment, or operating uh, procedures. I'd love to answer them. So drop me a line at kb9vbr at jpol-antenna.com or leave a comment uh, below this video and I'll work my hardest to answer those questions. So on to this week's question. Ben from Kansas asked, a few weeks ago I purchased a JPOL antenna and it seems to work very well with the RG8X that runs to my transceiver. However, I'm wondering if it'll work even better if I add a few loops of coax next to the antenna. Well, this question opens up a discussion on common mode currents, uh, what a ballon is, and uh, why do certain types of antennas benefit from them. So, a ballon can be a very complex subject, and there are entire books written on this topic. A ballon provides an important role uh, in your antenna system, that is by matching or transforming the impedance of the between the transmitter and the antenna. A ballon is a combination of two words that is balanced and unbalanced. Often they are used in connecting balanced antennas like dipoles to unbalanced feed lines like coaxial cable. A coaxial cable is an unbalanced feed line. The RF energy current runs up the center conductor and then back down the outer braid to the transmitter. Uh, the shielding that you find in coaxial cable helps prevent that RF energy from uh, leaking or, or radiating from the coax uh, and it's also a great choice for VHF and UHF antenna systems. Now the RF current doesn't actually run through the, the wires itself but along the, outer, but along the surface by a phenomenon known as the skin effect. In an ideal world the RF energy will travel up the, um, the, inner, the inner conductor and then back down the inside of the outer braid of the cable. But if there's any kind of mismatch on your antenna system um, that is maybe caused by high SWR or some other kind of issue, that energy can flip from the inner braid to the outer braid of the coaxial cable, or the inner, inside of the braid to the outside of the braid of the coaxial cable. And then the current will right back run down the outside of the cable um, and can cause the actual cable to radiate or become part of the, the, the antenna system. You see, that's... Um, the way cable is designed, um, it's sort of its own little Faraday cage. The RF energy travels up the center conductor and back down the, uh, the inner braid. Um, and then the outside of the braid is designed to keep that cable from radiating or being part of the, the antenna system, like a Faraday cage does. It keeps RF signals from uh, penetrating the, the, in, the inside of the cage or the outside of the cage. Uh, but when you have a, um, a mismatch or some type of imbalance, um, like I said, the energy runs along that outside, so your cable becomes the antenna as part of the antenna itself. So how do you prevent uh, a current from a common mode RF energy from traveling down the outside of your coaxial cable? Well, with a ballon or an RF choke, of course. So let's remember back to antenna theory 101. So in, a, in order for an antenna to radiate, it needs to match the impedance of the transmitter. In amateur radio circles, this is going to be 50 ohms. So in a perfect world, you know, we're going to, um, the transmitter is going to uh, produce RF energy. It's going to travel up the feed line to the antenna. The antenna is going to radiate it all into the ether. And then that remaining RF current is going to come back down the, out to the outer braid of the feed line back to the transmitter, completing the circuit. Um, but in some cases, this doesn't always work this way. If there's some kind of mismatch or imbalance in the antenna system, say the SWR is high, or there's some kind of um, environmental aspect or, or a large object that may be affecting you know, how the antenna performs, not all of that RF energy may be released by the antenna into the ether and instead uh, creates a high SWR or standing wave ratio, that, that, which means that RF energy along with the current is going back down the feed line to the transmitter. Uh, so how do we prevent that to happen? Um, well, um, that, uh, like I said, that RF energy is called, the R, is called a common mode current, and the way to stop that from happening is to create a common mode choke, which is a type of ballon. So RF chokes, uh, they can be actually very easy to make. 
uh, for VHF and UHF antennas, all you need to do is take about uh, five turns of coax into a four inch diameter circle, uh, these, um, creating loops. Uh, these loops can then be secured with, a couple, with some electrical tape or a couple of zip ties and placed uh, near the feed point of the antenna. Uh, what this choke, RF choke does is increases your impedance of the outer braid of the cable. So instead of being 50 ohms, that outer braid now is transformed into 2,000 ohms or more. RF energy is always going to take the path of least resistance, so this high impedance is going to block or stop the energy from traveling back down the feed line. So what if you were using a very stiff coax, though, something like LMR400 or the Belden 9913, one of those uh, real stiff double-shielded type coaxes. Um, you're not going to be able to make loops of that. Well, you can do two things. You can make a jumper out of a short piece of thinner coax like RJ58 and, and put it in line. Or another option would be to use uh, what we call uh, ferrite chokes. Uh, these are snap, these snap-on ferrite beads um, can be placed near the feed point of the antenna. Uh, they create little inductances um, to choke the RF energy the same way. They're increasing that impedance along the outer braid of the, of the antenna or out of the feed line. A type 43 mix uh, ferrite RF chokes are the best type to use. Uh, a couple links for resources on those can be found in the show notes below. So do you need an RF choke or a ballon for every, every kind of antenna? Well, uh, the short answer is no. It really depends upon the antenna and the feed line system that you're using. For example, a center-fed antenna like a dipole is considered a balanced antenna. If you were to connect, uh, connect a balanced antenna to this, uh, like a dipole to an unbalanced feed line like coaxial cable, you're going to need that RF choke in order to transform the impedance of the uh, between the antenna and the and the mounting system, and to keep any of those stray or antenna and the and the transmitter system, and to keep any of those stray RF currents from traveling back down the feed line. But what if you have an unbalanced antenna like a quarter wave ground plane? Well, um, ground plane antennas, like I said, are considered unbalanced antennas. You can connect those directly to an unbalanced feed line like coaxial cable without any need of a ballon or matching system to transform that impedance. They're going to work just fine directly connected to the coax. So now let's talk about this J-pole antenna that, the, um, that was brought up in the original question. Do I need a ballon or RF choke for my J-pole antenna? Well, Looking at the J-pole, you would consider that it's, it's an N-fed antenna, so it must act like a ground plane and, um, and be unbalanced. But uh, it's actually, uh, J-poles are half-wave antennas, and a half-wave antenna acts like more like a dipole antenna. It's, a, it's considered a balanced antenna sort of in disguise. So it, an RF choke is going to be necessary for a J-pole antenna to keep those common mode currents from traveling back down the feed line into your transmitter. Now, do you always need a, a ballon or a choke uh, for your antenna system? Well, the short answer is no. Uh, you know, if the stars align, everything's working well, you've got, you've got the perfect uh, setup, uh, you can get by without that RF choke and everything's gonna work fine. But uh, what I always say is, uh, with RF chokes, is that they never hurt, and they usually help the situation. So the first time you run into performance issues or some type of problem uh, with, with the matching SWR or something in your antenna system, uh, the first thing I'm always going to do is check to see if a ballon or choke is going to fix that situation. Well, that's it for this episode of Ham Radio q and I hope you learned a little bit about um, ballons and the importance of RF chokes, uh, why, they, why they're important on keeping that, those common mode currents from heading back down your feed line towards the transmitter. If you'd like your question answered on this program, drop me an email at kb9vbr at jpol-antenna.com. Love to have them. Or leave a comment below this video. Uh, we'll do our best to uh, answer your questions. Otherwise, um, be sure to read my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Follow us on Facebook or subscribe to this YouTube channel for instant notification when new videos are released. That's it for this episode of Ham Radio q &A. Have a great day and 73.